The following program is a Bear Man Productions. Ever episode to Baron Folks. This is Braden Lentz, also known as Braden the Bear Lentz, trying to switch my last name here pretty soon. But today I have a very, very special uh, guest on our show today. As at the end of the episode, I'll be talking about my thoughts, about personal experiences, about other things related to the topic that we're going to be talking about today, and that is sports photography and photo editing. Today, we have a very special guest. Her name is Gracie Farrell. She actually was famous last semester for posting a picture of Rob Fennessy in the middle of a sea of crowd uh, after IU beat Purdue last year at Indiana University on uh, August, in January of 2021. So, of course, we are very excited to have her. She is a recent graduate of IU, spent four long years at the Cuban Center, and she actually spent a lot of time as a photographer. As I learned from the interview today, she started off in high school and then advanced her talents from there. So anyone that is a sports broadcasting, a sports journalism major, listen up because there's a lot of important detail in this podcast today that you may want to know if you're going to be applying for college and having other programs along the way because I will recommend IU for the media school part. And I would recommend them for all the careers and for anything else that is related to media and sports, because you can get an opportunity in there, or basically anywhere that has a media program that isn't that selective. So here is the interview with me and Gracie today. Hopefully you all enjoy, and please make sure to comment, like, and subscribe to this YouTube channel. We're growing like crazy. I have content coming out every week. I feel a lot more motivated now. I've been able to sleep more. My mental health's been very good right now. So uh, here is the interview. I hope you all enjoy. It just got wrapped up here at around 11.28 here on a Monday afternoon. So, yeah. Uh, enjoy. Uh, I meant to say morning, but enjoy. And also leave any comments down if you have any questions for me or for her. So thank you so much. Hopefully you enjoy. And here is the interview with Gracie Farrell. Sure. Um, Love where it. are you currently at right now? I am at work. I'm at my internship at the Cuban Center. And oh, we nice. have a sound soundproof room so we take a lot of phone calls in here while we're in the office and stuff like that so oh no worries uh but i know that you've spent a lot of time at the cuban center which was one of the first things i wanted to talk about uh so this uh you just graduated is that correct yes i did yep and so i know you've had some amazing work that was done over at the cuban center uh I've seen some of your photos are fantastic. Uh, so tell me a little bit, how was your time there, your four years, and how do what did you learn? Yeah, good question. Yeah. So I originally started working with the Cuban Center. It was like the second semester of my sophomore year. So it's been about like three seasons, like school seasons, not full years yet. But um, it's been a really cool experience. It's something that I didn't necessarily think I was going to be involved in in college, um, but I'm super grateful for the opportunity. Um, I got into photography as a high schooler. And then when I saw the opportunity arise with the Cuban Center, being able to photograph the 24 sports on campus, I was super excited because that sounds like a super cool gig, at least to a sophomore in college. I was like, whoa, I would love to be able to do that. Um, and now I've been working with them for quite some time here. And um, it's been a really, really cool experience. I've learned a lot about um, studio work in particular. I'm able to take pictures using lights and 
flashes and strobes and things of that nature that I didn't know how to do um, beforehand, um, but also just fine tuning my skills and my camera work um, and being able to take photos in different settings, um, no matter what the circumstances are. So, yeah. Uh, so I do know that during your basketball season and during Little Five, you took some amazing photos, especially the one with uh, IU Purdue last year. How was it like being a photographer at Ruckus Stadiums like Assembly Hall? Yeah, definitely. So um, I I did take a really a really awesome photo. Um, I didn't realize how much that would blow up um, until after the fact, but um, it's really cool being able to work in stadiums like Assembly. Um, I've gotten the chance to travel to a couple away games um, at different universities, not necessarily for men's basketball, but for other teams like our women's team, uh, women's basketball team, as well as different football stadiums. Um, and it really, you know, you never even it doesn't matter where you where you go. Um, you step into a stadium and when it's full, it is just one of the craziest feelings because you feel like an ant. And um, there's so many people and so many loud, loud people that you never really forget that you're like just a small part of <clears throat> the success of this team, you know, and you're not contributing athletically to the success of the team, but just to be able to take um, some pictures and kind of show what that team, their journey throughout that season is really cool. Um, and I, every time I step into a stadium and I hear the roar, um, that is exactly what I think about. So yeah, it's been really, really cool. Um, and it's a lot of fun to see different venues and different stadiums and um, see what the atmosphere is like at different schools as well. So I forgot to ask you, you said you weren't initially doing photography. So how did you get involved in uh, photography? Yeah, yeah. So I got my first camera as a sophomore in high school. Um, it was a Christmas gift and it truly was just for fun to take pictures of friends um, and kind of just mess around just to have, um, you know, something to do with friends. Um, that quickly turned into my first freshman year of college, I took a course on like how to actually use a camera and the settings and learning all the ins and outs. And that's where photography started to take off for me. It was a lot more of just a hobby and much more of like, I could, I could see myself doing this for work. I could see myself um, wanting to connect with people through the camera. Um, and that's when I started doing things like senior photos and um, working with like engagements, headshots, that sort of thing, just here or there, charging like $30 for 15 pictures. It was just something that was good side money. Um, and then it was when the Cuban Center came out with that posting for sports photography that I was like, holy cow, this would be really cool to do full time and um, really commit to. So, yeah. Wow. That's really cool. I've always wanted to be a photographer, uh, take photos from time to time, but I don't do it professionally. So uh, what are some advice? Does, have you ever done it for freelance or anything like that? I've done a lot of freelance for more portrait photography. Um, when it comes to sports, I've really only worked with IU so far. I'm totally open to freelance in sports, but I just haven't had the opportunity yet. Um, but I, I work a lot in I, I guess you would call it like freelance working for um, clients, like other people that just need like senior photos um, or someone, you know, is asking their girlfriend to get married. So they need some quick photos. Um, I've done countless like family portraits and, um, you know, senior portraits, engagements, um, headshots, the, the whole shebang, anything that anyone needs portrait wise. I've done a lot, a lot of work. Um, I probably, I mean, I couldn't even tell you how many people I've worked with, um, in the IU area just alone in portraiture, but that is like a, a total, um, that's a side gig for me. That's like, um, a personal business that I, I love working with people, but, um, sports usually takes priority over some of those things just because, um, I take the internship really seriously and I like to make sure that I'm available, um, and able to help out as much as possible. So I knew you mentioned that you had had time for three years at the Cuban center how do you think your overall experience has not only changed you as a photographer, but as a person? That's a really good question. I think that it's changed me in a way that I always like to try to remember that 
these moments are some of these moments are historic and um they're going to live on forever and it's really important to me that I'm able to be a small piece of that and help out in any way and it I just like to remember that um if I can be a small part in that it's, it makes me feel feel really good on the inside I feel like I'm a part of something bigger um but also that again these things are moments in time and we need to appreci- appreciate the now because even though we're looking back on these photos from say 20 years ago um we need to live in the moment and make sure that <clears throat> There weren't this isn't it's not gonna last forever. So just being appreciative of the now and making sure that you live in the moment, I would say, is what photography has kind of taught me because it's fun to look back on photos, but that's not gonna last forever. So mm-hmm. so I knew that you were uh, talking a little bit about a photo, just a little bit about editing. What kind of advice or even uh, applications have you used for editing software like Photoshop or anything like that? Sure. Yeah. So personally, I use a lot of Lightroom and a lot of Photoshop, Adobe Photoshop and Adobe Lightroom. I would say at work, though, we use a lot of Photo Mechanic and um, Camera Raw. They're nice and expensive platforms that um, are a little bit too expensive for me to use in my personal life at the moment as a college kid, but they work seamlessly and they're very 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 perfect and so that's why we use a lot of that at work at the cuban center um <clears throat> other than that we use a lot of photo shelter to kind of upload photos and send out to our social media teams and then we also use it for archival purposes making sure that those photos are around and able to be pulled up 10 years from now um so yeah i would say camera raw and photoshop and photo mechanic are probably the biggest ones um, in the sports office here. Yep. Now I forgot to ask you uh, way before the beginning that you just like me, uh, our students at IU. So what really perked your interest about going to IU and especially the media school and the Cuban center? Yes, definitely. So I um, am from Indiana and I was super aware growing up of IU. My father played football here in the nineties, the early nineties. And we have grown up Hoosiers. Um, we've been coming to games forever. So when applying to school, I knew that IU was a place I needed to apply to. I only applied to like, um, it was four colleges out of high school. And um, I got into IU and it was always on my um, mind, just mostly because in-state tuition is super helpful and it's a great institution and it's exactly what I was looking for. It was a bigger university um, with lots of different opportunities, but the media school stuck out to me because it, it was really up and coming. It was something that a lot of universities don't have. It's a newer program um, and there were just a lot of creative opportunities that I was really looking into. My father had always known about the Cuban Center and um, since the money was donated and whatnot, he had kind of had his eye on the program um, from the start. But I, like any other high school girl, was like, yeah, sure, dad, whatever. That's cool. That's cool. And it wasn't until I really got here and applied for it that I was like, holy cow, this is really, really cool. Um, So I guess you should listen to your parents more often. But um, that's kind of why I knew that the media school was really cool, really renowned, really up and coming. And um, that was something that was really interesting to me because I was really interested in the creative side and making sure that my major was something that could keep me interested and creative and thinking all the time. Well, that's really cool. I kind of thought the same way when I was going to IU as well, saw a picture and at the IDS office and I was pretty amazed and wanted to go there. Uh, So How do you think college has uh, changed you as a person as well as a photographer? That's a good question. I think that college has, I actually went to um, boarding school for high school. So I lived away from my parents. It's been like eight years now since I lived at home. It was eighth grade was the last time I lived at my parents' house. So I think that in a way I did my most growing in high school probably just because I had to grow up really fast and kind of learn for myself. So coming into college, I never felt like I was 
Mm. Of course, everyone grows and gets older and matures and there's so much of that, but I felt like the biggest chunk of that was done in high school for me. So coming to college, I felt really prepared, honestly, and I never felt like I was homesick or that I needed to mature quickly and learn how to do my own laundry or anything like that. Um, but I would say some things that I have learned at university is that I would say um, there's you pick your friends, that's for sure. Um, and it's really important to me picking people to be surrounded with that are really positive influences and um, that they are going to help me grow and become better every single day. Um, and that real life is not about who's the coolest kid or who has the biggest resume. It's all about just being a genuinely good person and helping those around you. Um, and I'd say that's definitely absolutely what I found um, at IU, not just in my personal life, but also with the type of people I've met at the Cuban Center. Um, I've had two excellent, excellent bosses that have been nothing but truly genuine and have helped me learn so, so much. Um, but also we've taken on a couple interns here that have been um, some of the greatest people ever, and they continue to push me to grow every single day. And they also are just super cool people that I love to hang out with outside of the office as well. So I think surrounding yourself with really good people and just continuing to push yourself and learn new things be based on those people that you surround yourself with, probably. I asked you that because there's a lot of high school kids that watch my channel and they were very interested in knowing about college and all that sort of stuff. So uh, I wanted to also ask you how has your time with the women's basketball team, how was that last year working for a national, really almost national championship team? Yes. Yeah. And that was probably the coolest experience I've had at IU. Um, it was so much fun. And that team is so incredible. Um, they <clears throat> by far have probably been my favorite experience, my favorite team to work with. They are so genuinely nice. The entire program is so welcoming. Um, they are so, they're so skilled. I mean, hello, they are some of the best women's basketball players in the country and um, they deserved every single ounce of fame and more. Um, they deserve the spotlight. And I wish that they got that spotlight a little bit more because they work so, so hard and I wish more people could see that. But it was so much fun. I mean, one of my favorite games was probably the game we played. Um, it was senior day and we won the um, Big Ten regular season champs and we um, also beat Purdue. So it was by far one of the coolest days. Um, it was awesome to be able to recognize our seniors, but also winning that um, champion position was so cool. And it created some of the best pictures as well. I mean, it's always fun to take pictures of celebration because these girls get super hyped up and they're normally a very level headed and wise team. And we don't always see their, that super fun passion and excitement when they're playing a team that is a little bit, you know, a little bit, they're not as competitive. Let's say it's, it's, they are a lot more level headed in those games. And it's fun when we get to see them really be excited and passionate in bigger games like that. So um, I had a great opportunity to be able to travel with them all season long. I got to go to so many different stadiums across the Big Tens, and um, it was super cool, a dream for sure. So they are so awesome, and I would do it again every season if I could. So For many people that are thinking about going to IU, what are some of the qualities about, like some of the positives you would say about working at the Cuban Center or why you should work there? Yeah, definitely. Well, I'd say the first one is how diverse we are. Um, I just I've started applying to other jobs for full time positions now as I've graduated. And that's one thing that I don't necessarily see in other programs. We have so many different people of different ages, different races, different backgrounds, different religions. There's no one type of person here. Um, I'm a team of we're completely equal men and women in the photo department. And it is so cool to be able to have a bunch of different people at our table. And that's something that we are not seeing in other departments, which is really cool. Um, so diversity first, but also the collaborative aspect is really interesting because we get to work 
very closely as the photo team. We get to work very closely with the video team, graphics, social media, and it's fun to be able to sit down at a table and talk about, you know what, this is what needs to be, be done this week. And video needs to be doing this. And this is what we need from photo. And then everyone chimes in and, you know, graphics graphics is like, I could really use this help from video. Or I think this suggestion needs to be altered here. And to be able to sit down and have those conversations at the Cuban Center is obviously super important to the way our content is produced. But also it's great because it's just a collaborative, inviting environment where we're getting a lot of stuff done. Um, and that brings me to my last point is that we're just really efficient over here. We know how it's done. Everyone that we bring in is kind of brought up to that speed and we're making sure that content's going out constantly um, and it's really good content too. So it's a really, really cool program over here. I had no idea how this stuff worked before I dove in and started working with them, but I would recommend it to anyone. The Cuban Center is super, super cool. That is very fascinating. And I really also liked seeing some of the people at the Cuban Center and uh, working with them was a lot of fun too. Did some videography stuff for Victim Plus. Uh, that's why. Totally so, cool. Um, the other question I had was that, uh, have you ever done any videography other than photography at the Cuban Center? I have not. We try our hardest to actually not dip it our toes into other areas um we really like to fine tune and um succeed in like one particular area our strength we have had interns that at the end of the school year they decide to apply for a different spot in the cuban center and they come back and they're part of a different team i've just really enjoyed photography and i haven't felt the need to step out and apply for a different team so i have not i have not done any videography honestly and um i'm okay with that that's really fine I, you know i love to learn how to use a video camera i would that'd be awesome and i applaud those that do because i have no idea but um i am we're very kind of stick with your thing and make sure you're an expert in it here at the cuban center so that's really fascinating so uh the i had maybe one or two other questions i wanted to ask a uh, I knew that when you were graduating, I looked on uh, your Instagram and I saw that you and your brother were graduating at the same time, too. How did that feel to graduate with your brother? I um, it, my twin sister is um, she just graduated with me. My younger brother is a high schooler. He's a senior in high school. So we're all technically graduating from different places this year. Um, my twin sister goes to IU with me and we've graduated on the same day, which is really cool. I mean, we've grown up being twins, so it's it's pretty normal to me. I've gone through so many graduations with her at this point. Um, so, so used to it, I feel like, but it's definitely still a cool experience. And she's by far like my best friend in the entire universe. So the fact that we have been able to um, graduate college together and we lived together all four years it's been it's I'm super super lucky but um, younger brother is also he is on his way he graduates I guess technically in like three weeks from high school and he's off to college here soon so we are all graduates this year and we're all super proud mom and dad are very happy and you know it's another success so yep oh, well congratulations thank um, you sisters also graduating from eighth grade. She's anxious about high school. So, Yes, how cute. Good for her. Congrats. Uh, thank you. Uh, so uh, the last question I wanted to ask was for anyone that's interested, uh, can you still apply for the Cuban Center or when can you apply for anyone that doesn't know? Sure, yeah. So we just had applications go out. It was in April. So they are closed for this semester. But I would say to keep a lookout because every semester we do different departments consider um, hiring. I'd say the biggest hiring comes in April of every year. Um, and I would just keep an eye out on Twitter and Instagram at IU Hoosiers. That's where it will be posted. Um, us interns, we try to make sure that we repost it as well. So if you're following any of us, you'll probably see it. But sometimes we do batches in the fall. But I would say the, the biggest majority is in April. And unfortunately, those are closed right now. But they will be open next year. <laughs> So uh, that's one important thing for the listeners is that 
keeping up on like college information and updates is super important, especially for learning yeah. about careers. 100%. Yes. Making sure you're following people or you're attached on email newsletters. Very important. Yes. Yeah. So uh, thank you so much for joining me on this interview. Uh, it's great to have you along. Uh, you've done some amazing work and I'm really proud of you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, have a good one. You too. Bye -bye. Well, yeah, that was a really interesting interview that we had with Gracie. I thank her again for actually coming on to the show for the very first episode of our podcast. This is for anyone in high school and college, by the way. We're hoping to do this probably every Thursday. So this might come out around Tuesday or Thursday, but not for sure. Uh, so we talked a little bit about graduation. And as I said in the interview, yes, my sister is going to be graduating from middle school this year. She's going into high school super anxious, of course, because she's got autism. And of course, uh, she is not going to have that same support again at the high school, but I'm hoping that we can try to provide that here at home uh, for her, by the way. Uh, I love her very much, very proud of her. She's going into ninth grade. I mean, I don't like saying that for any of you people out there to take it the wrong way, but no, this is a really big moment for her because of her autism and what she's had to endure and uh, everything like that. So some of the biggest advice that I learned from that is, yeah, absolutely go to uh, – ask people experts i knew her way before uh, this but ask her and ask people like her about opportunities and internships and that sort of stuff that's probably going to be the biggest thing that i would probably say about uh jobs especially in today's world in the 21st century always ask ask and ask some more always look look and look around some more and always be around more people that are going to be the same way about careers as you are. Because you might find some people that you might really like. The Cuban Center is a great place for people to learn and for people to grow. As I said, it's a great place for anyone of that matter to actually learn about the career in question. And of course, um, it's very unique seeing people like her because yeah, she's about to find full-time work, but you can still ask her about advice and questions that you have on photography. And yeah, your work experience doesn't have to just end at the office. It just gets started. I just mean, that's one of the things I've learned in finding careers, especially as a tip for young broadcasters. And that is, we are always in a habit of asking people and always telling questions to create a story. Be interested in what you do. Be loving with how you do it and love every moment of the job because you may find people that you will thank later for having them help you along the way. So your journey doesn't just start in college. It's only beginning. Your journey through work is only beginning. And that's one of the things I learned is that, yeah, even though maybe the job didn't take me seriously, maybe the work didn't take me seriously, maybe even the business didn't take me seriously. And we're always giving me highs and lows and trying to reject me and deny me from doing projects or trying to reject and deny me from doing work. But I'm going to say it now, failure is what builds you as a person. Failure is the catalyst of being successful. That's why I've been saying the entire time to not just my sister, but to all other young people out there, especially young broadcasters, is always anticipate failure. And failure is not pretty. You're going to have no's. You're going to have your times where no, you get 100 no's and maybe one yes. Admire that one yes, even if the job's bad, because it is paying your bills. But also admire the people that work at that job. I worked at a job last year. It was a, an internship at Bloom Magazine, which is a magazine company here in Bloomington, Indiana. Yeah, I may have not liked the job. Yeah, I may not have been interested in working in a magazine. But I did it for gas money, one. And two, I learned how a magazine is run. So that's, uh, even though I didn't like the job, even though there was a ton of failures, even though they didn't let me do or let me... Uh, have or they didn't have me help out a lot except for a little bit of things but a lot of times i sat in the office you admire those just the little moments where you get to learn something where you get to grow where you get to be another person where as a young broadcaster you may notice people like jim nansen 
all that and nominate yourself for the Jim Nance Award. But I'm just going to say, as a broadcaster, it's super, super important to always ask, ask, and ask some more. Ask about the industry in question. Ask if you're not interested in the industry. Ask about Adobe Premiere Audition, whatever you have. Lightroom, all that stuff. Ask, ask, and ask some more, but also train yourself. Train yourself to be that worker that you want to be because, yeah, as I said, failure is the catalyst of success. And I've seen a ton of failures, especially since I've been in college. But to see her do an amazing job at her job and doing amazing work and being one of her biggest connections, I cannot, I cannot stress it enough. Always ask and always do like what I'm doing and ask other people. Grow the connection a little bit farther. Always include them on the podcast or something. Ask about how they got into the industry. So that's my little tidbit. And then about photo editing and photography, I love doing that stuff now. I never, never thought to myself I would be doing it. I never thought I would because every broadcasting job I had started to deny me. And that's why I got so sick because I was too stressed in the moment of why am I being the one that's going through all this? Well, everybody else is going through that too. It's just a part of life. But failure is, again, the catalyst of success. And I've had to learn different things. Graphic design, photo editing. Started doing it more for freelance. And you can find any job in this field. Journalism is a broad subject. You can find it in anywhere. If you know Photoshop, you know Photoshop. If you know Premiere, you know Premiere. But you can venture into other avenues. And sometimes at work, you can't always go with what you're interested in, but sometimes something that has to fill in a role or a seat. So always try to learn more, a little bit more about the subject at hand, the subject at large, and make sure that you're always learning as I talked to Gracie about always learn and learn and learn some more. That's how you grow because she knew nothing about photography until she got into high school and college. And, uh, of course, I want to, again, say congratulations to her and her family. It's a really happy time right now for them being seniors. And for me being a senior next year, it's really admiring to see someone graduate because you know that one day through all your challenges and all your hard work and all that dedication will finally pay off. So, again, failure is the catalyst to success. So, uh, that's the main lesson I have for today's podcast. Starting next week, or in the next two weeks, I'll keep you guys posted. I plan to interview someone from the Indiana Wildlife Federation about what the current situation of the bird flu is going on right now. And I'm not going to make any promises. So... It could change, it might not, it's just whenever they can get back to me, I just emailed them just a little bit ago about the opportunity. So I'll keep you guys informed about what the next podcast is going to be, but it's going to probably be somebody from either a wildlife federation or somebody who's working in wildlife right now to talk about the current bird flu situation and how the news should handle this, not only that, but also in Indiana and in other surrounding communities. How can we be more informed about the bird flu that's currently going on that's also a mutation of what's about to come? for another pandemic for us human beings. So thank you everybody again for listening to this amazing podcast. This was your host, Brayden. Let's listen to us on Spotify, Apple Music, wherever you get get your podcasts. Sorry to repeat that again. Wherever you get your podcasts. Sorry about that. But again, everybody, have a great day. Have a good life. Make sure you take advantage of learning. And as I say every day, I love you all. I thank you all. And have a great day. Thank you so much and have a good one.